What's going on, people? Welcome back. Another weekly installment of some workouts. I have a 45 minute one, give or take a couple of minutes. I'm gonna be using a 30, a 45, and a 65 throughout the course of this workout here. 30 towards the end, probably for like for the core movements and whatnot, 65 for the beginning and the bulk, and then 45 when you go through those AMRAPs. Find a couple, one moderately heavy, one a little bit on the lighter side, and one right in the middle, and that should fill you up for this workout. If anything is confusing to you, you can go ahead and jump to the back, we'll have everything laid out, scripted videos and whatnot. If you like you can tackle things, let's just let it play out. We're gonna hop into a warm up. We're gonna have a couple of AMRAP departments, so as many reps as possible, one for 12, one for six minutes, get that heart rate up, a little bit of metabolic conditioning going on, focus on stabilization, mobility, and then get some strength, power movements in there as well. So as always, we're gonna hit all of the plans of movements, get the full body here incorporated, and uh, yeah, let's have a good one here, all right? We'll see you on the other side. Warm up time here, my friends. Appreciate y'all stopping by again for your weekly round of fun. Just hop in whenever you feel comfortable with it. We're gonna be doing a little bit of Cossack squats, polar bear presses, inchworms, kick throughs, you name it. We're just getting the spine moving every which way, warming up the legs, ankles, all the joints, getting the blood flowing right here, getting everything ready for the next hour that's ahead of us. So pace it out, breathe it out, bend it out, shake it out, do what you gotta do. We got five minutes here, let's try and get a little sweat going before we get things started.
very nice warm up is coming to a close we'll have 30 seconds to kind of catch our breath find the kettlebells of our choosing grab a water bottle grab a mat find some space here to get through this first movement it's going to be an alternating rdl v stance into a clean into a single arm thruster full body movement getting a hip hinge, getting some explosive plyometric with the clean, and then lower body and upper body integration. So alternate between the five, and then we're gonna move into 15 scap push-ups. So testing the core, testing some postural muscles here. Three sets, so let's catch your breath and let's get these things started.
are we thinking here? First two sets down. If we are feeling ambitious, let's grab a little heavier kettlebell now that we get the movement pattern down pat, bump it up a little bit, and really go for it this last go around. Great job with those three sets, RDLs, cleans, all that fun stuff. Those are some good movements, some postural movements there with the scat push-up, feeling a little burn behind the shoulder blades. Now that we got that wrapped up, let's catch our breath. We're going to be moving into a 12-minute AMRAP, meaning as many reps as possible. We have an alternating V-stand swing. We're going to have an alternating gorilla row into an overhand release push-up. So we're doing 10 for all of these. We're just setting that timer for 12 and we're just gonna let it rip. Let's see how many times we can get through this one here.
feeling out there? Six minutes down, six to go. We're now approaching that halfway point. Now is a great time being that we may have gotten through it a couple times to decide which movement we hated the most out of these three. I think I was really leaning towards the Gorilla Rose. <laughs> my grip strength was killing me after the swing. My back was pretty toast. But we're gonna wrap up here, home stretch. Let's finish on a high note. I'm sipping away into the sea Stuck inside the rabbit hole Set me free from you Somebody please keep me from twisting Keep me from twisting Keep me from twisting Keep me from somebody please Keep me from twisting Keep me from twisting Keep me from twisting Somebody please
fill you in. I am finishing up the editing on this video four days after this workout in my trunk and obliques are still torched. Thinking the culprit is this group of movements. So you got something to look forward to here. Oh, 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 oh,
of this workout with a six minute AMRAP. We're going to be testing our hip musculature, the whole integrity of our lunge patterning with that isometric hold, throwing a little bit of core work and thoracic mobility with our halo as well as the beetle, hip flexors, oblique, scapular strength, wrist dexterity, the whole nine. So just a little bit more whole body metabolic conditioning as opposed to strength and power just to put icing on the cake on this excellent workout y'all did today. So take this this last breather, water up, and then we're gonna have six minutes to leave it all on the floor. So let's finish strong here. You got this.
sucked. <laughs> Good job, y'all, for making it to the end. That was awesome. A lot more stabilization aspects to that one with like the ISO holds. Same thing with like the overhead stability, stuff like that. That was a, was a good one. So good for you. If you had to modify a couple of them, that's fine. You just got something to shoot for next time you visit this workout. We'll keep it rolling for you. If you have any tidbits, anything I can do better, go ahead, leave a comment. Tell me I suck. Tell me I can improve in these aspects of things. If you liked anything that I did in this video, give me a thumbs up, share it, or just say, yo, that was, that was good. <laughs> Any and all criticism is welcomed. As always, appreciate y'all stopping by. We'll see you next week, all right? Take care. So we are doing some movement analyses. Analysis is, first one's gonna be a B stance RDL into a clean, into a single arm thruster. What we're looking for right here is a B stance. So pick whatever leg you wanna start off with. That one will be slightly behind. Try and line up your front toe to your back heel. Still shoulder width apart. The primarily loaded leg is gonna be out in front. So let's have left leg back. Left arm is gonna have the kettlebell in it. We're gonna move it to an RDL. So that hinge pattern, soft bend in the knee, flat back, let's engage the core, squeeze the glutes, we're going to extend upwards, so that'll be the first part of the movement, the RDL. Second one will be a clean, so we're pulling up through the elbow, up into that front rack position. Single arm thruster, so squatting down with the weight on the left hand side on the way up, and use that momentum, drive that kettlebell up overhead, and that'll be for one. And we're going to be alternating between the two of them, five on each side. Let's look at a high scapular push-up. We're gonna move into a high plank, get everything set up, check all those boxes for your plank, driving the toes hard into the ground, making sure our hips are level, hips aren't sagging, squeezing the glutes, all that fun stuff, straight line from the heel to the head. And then we're just moving about, really trying to fight the urge to bend the elbows. I know I do a little bit. Tucking our chin down and then just letting our shoulder blades kind of glide over our ribs there. So let your chest fall down as much as you can. Uh, then we're going to protract and really try and press away from the earth as much as we can. Get a nice round in the upper back as you go. So just protracting, retracting. If we have an affinity to bend the elbows and we're trying to almost do a push up, I know it's a hard habit to break, we can move into a low plank. So just on our forearms and that'll just really reinforce the scapula being the only thing that's moving. So it's really gonna help out our serratus anterior. You should feel a small burn in that muscle group back there. Really good postural movement and just setting up the shoulder blades to support the load. Looking at a alternating B stance single arm swing, It'll just be one leg behind. So try and line up your back foot, the front toe of that one should be in line with the, the front foot's heel. So still having a shoulder width apart, nice firm base down there. We're just offsetting that stance to put more load on that front foot. Same way you would start a traditional swing, have it a couple inches ahead of you. So that first pull, use that momentum and that gets that hinge pattern going. Bracing the core, soft bend in the knees. As we squeeze our glutes, we move our hips forward. So we're really gonna extend that. So really embracing the lower portion of our body should be generating the most amount of force as opposed to lifting with your shoulders. At the highest point of that kettlebell, maybe about mid chest, we're gonna alternate feet, alternate hands. So that kettlebell should be just about weightless. We're using that momentum to come up. So at the highest point, transition, switching hands, switching feet to that opposite B stance, testing our proprioception with the hand-eye coordination, testing a little bit of rhythm, getting that fluid movement going on, and then a lot of hip extensor strength. So we're getting the glutes, getting the erectors in our back, using some core strength, the anti-rotation with unilateral work. So alternate between the two, find a good rhythm for you taking a look here at an alternating gorilla row so alternating as it insinuates for one arm at a time so we're going to crowd the kettlebell have it right in between our feet a little bit wider than shoulder width so a nice firm base underneath us slight bend in the knees we're going to hinge backwards so push the hips back embrace the core nice straight line from the hips up to the shoulders just about and just taking turns lifting up that kettlebell Let's try to visualize as opposed to just picking it up with our hand primal type of pull let's try and envision pulling up through the elbows. Move the elbow, move the scapula, big squeeze of the lats, engage that, squeeze it up top for about a one Mississippi, and then on the way down to we want to control it, we just don't want the kettlebell to take us back down to earth. Slowly lower it back down, nice and controlled, and then we're alternating sides. What to look out for here as we start to fatigue, a lot of people they do like a jerking motion, so they extend up top, use that momentum to kind of yank it up top. If that is starting to happen to you, just be mindful of it, uh, then take a rest and go back into it. We want to stay as uniform the entire time, using the lats primarily throughout this movement. We're going to touch base here on an overhead release push-up into a down dog. Apply yourself just as you would a normal push-up, but when you're at the bottom, you're going to go ahead, reach out ahead of you as much as you can, almost like a superman. 
you want to get wild, you can lift up the lower half as well, get the quads up off the ground. Right now we're just focusing on the overhead release. And then when we come back in that push-up position, we're going to drive up hard. Somebody were to grab you by your waist, pull you up. That's kind of the mechanic that we're looking for here. So flex the hips, use your core, use your shoulder blades, scapula, everything, and driving you away from the ground, and that'll be for one. So with this movement is really great for not only mobility of the upper body and stretching out the hamstrings with that down dog position, we're also playing around with the central nervous system right here. So when we go down into that push-up, our CNS is primed for the load, everything's engaged, and then as soon as we release, we need to relax all those muscle fibers, use the antagonist muscles as we do the overhead release, so working the traps, using the rhomboids, the rear delts, then when you come back, the CNS needs to engage again and apply that force to get you up into that push-up and into that down dog. So it's really nice just working everything inside that shoulder girdle, a little bit of mobility, and some strength involved as well. Alrighty, this one is a fun one, a lot of words, bear with me. It's an ipsilateral lateral lunge into a snatch into a reverse lunge into a half kneeling windmill. So let's take it down step by step, ipsilateral, first off meeting same side. So let's just start everything on the right hand side, kettlebell is going to be on our right side, we're going to be lunging to our right side. So right here trying to keep our torso up as high as we can, nice wide stance, use that proprioception, get your bearings right here should feel a big stretch in our adductors and then as we press back to center a lot of those abductors so a lot of that glute med you can get a lot of quad action to drive us back to center just be mindful of that leg that you're doing the lunge with trying to keep that shin as vertical as you can so a good telltale sign of that if you're not in the right position your knee's going to be tracking either outside or over your toes or something so that's kind of your benchmark that you want to hit in the lateral lunge try and have that shin vertical as we come back to center we're going to move that kettlebell well out of the front rack position into a hinge pattern, snatching it up overhead. So extending through the hips, big pull of the elbow, using our traps, using our glutes, all that fun stuff, getting it up overhead. We're going to try and keep that kettlebell as vertical as we can. So if you can picture almost like a string attached to it, that's going to be hoisted up from the ceiling. So nice and vertical, try and create a nice strong foundation to move into that reverse lunge. And being that everything is going to be ipsilateral, let's move that left leg back. Same lunge on that right side. Moving into the windmill now. We're gonna look up at the kettlebell, so eyes on that thing, make sure it's not getting away from you as we go into the trunk flexion. And this will be a good test here for the mobility of our hips. So you're gonna feel a pretty good stretch on that right leg as we're going down. Try and get your bearings so the left arm is gonna go down, touch the ground. Feeling ambitious, you can bring that forearm down to the ground just depending upon your level of mobility. And once you get down to that deepest point, now we're gonna use our erectors, using our obliques, still using that shoulder stability to maintain everything, upright posture. And then we're gonna lunge forward back down to a front rack position and that's for one <laughs> so a lot of different movements take it slow if you're not comfortable with a snatch you can just deal with an overhead press if you're not comfortable with maybe a windmill maybe just go for a rotation or just hang out in that reverse lunge just a really good complex hitting all the different movement patterns upper body lower body proprioception core it's a fun one take it slow see what you can do Taking a look here at a kettlebell pullover. This is a great movement for your lats. You're getting some grip strength in here, a little bit of core, and then just the shoulder girdle mobility and everything going up overhead. Starting in that supine position, knees are going to be bent, heels together, and just grabbing the kettlebell up by the horns, really squeezing it together, engaging the chest, getting a firm grip on it. And then as we extend up overhead, trying to engage the core, squeeze the glutes, make sure everything is nice and compact as we go overhead with it. We're trying not to have our ribs flare up or, you know, move too quickly in that direction as your shoulders are going to be a little bit compromised so slow on the descent and then we're going to engage the core engage the lats drive through the elbows and bring in that kettlebell back up to center checking out a butterfly setup so this one very similar to a traditional setup same mechanics we're just doing the setup but just butterfly is describing the positioning of the lower body a lot of times if you're doing that crunch or you're doing that setup right in front of you we're going to be relying heavily on our hip flexors to do the brunt of the work that's why as you start doing those you get a little bit taxed and then your toes start coming up so a lot of people put them under a dumbbell or put them underneath a kettlebell to restrain them but in that same instance we're going to be relying on the hip flexors so the butterfly setup knees are going to be facing out 
heels are gonna be together. So this way, those same muscles that flex the hip, those are gonna be out of the equation. So just relying all on the rectus abdominis and this core musculature to get you up to the top. Same mechanics, um, you can reach out overhead, get a big stretch of the abdomen, and as you go up, if you need it, you can use that little bit of momentum coming forward with you, but ideally it's gonna be a lot just in that trunk, a lot in the core muscles to get you up. If you start feeling your feet wanted to come up off the ground, that's when you know you hit the tipping point and those hip flexors are coming into the equation. Kind of a wordy one here, wordy one. Alternating reverse lunge iso into a halo. So if you are comfortable with a lunge pattern, that reverse lunge, we're now gonna incorporate a little bit of a halo. So that's just a core movement going up around your head. So focusing on a little bit of thoracic mobility, core stabilization, and then really testing your balance, your proprioception, the overall integrity of your lunge patterning. If you can get down into that pattern, Pattern. Excellent. So now we're going to be just moving a load up around your head. So the stability, synergistic muscle groups acting together around your hip to stabilize with that halo. It's a great one. You definitely want to go a little bit lighter with this one. You don't want to load it up too, too heavy as you are going up over your head. So it shouldn't be so much of a strain on the lower half in that lunge, but you'll, you'll be feeling it. Really take it slow. You can feel your quads burning and glutes and everything getting into play. Really great one for the end of a workout. Really tax your core stabilization. Really great for your potential tendon as well so knee health your ligaments good for joint health down there with the isometric so full package get some strength get some stabilization some mobility up there up top with the halo it's a really great movement take it slow go a little bit lighter looking at a beetle right here it's a great exercise if you're auditioning for the new james bond movie if you are practicing to smoke your cousins in the twister game for the holidays but also really good for scapular health single arm stability wrist health hip flexor strength obliques new motor pathways uh, moving your body around that we get away from as we age. So this one in particular is really good for proprioception, rotating about with your scapula, again, really good fluid movement around your rib cage. Like I was saying before, wrist stability, wrist strength there, as we're not so often in that fully flexed position for a wrist. So fall prevention, everything like that. Again, proprioception as we rotate, we're engaging through our hip flexors, engaging through our obliques when we're rotating. First time you're doing it, if this is a new movement for you, you're gonna feel like a baby lamb or something. You're moving pretty funky and I'm sure you haven't done this in years, if ever. So the first time you're going about this, you're gonna feel a little bit clunky. And then it's more of a brain exercise than it is a body exercise at that moment. And then as you get more fluid with it, it'll be like metabolic conditioning and core training and cardio and everything. So it's a great progression and you can add so many other movements from this initial beetle exercise. At first, take it slow, really focus on the steps, make it as fluid as you can. Uh, yeah, just have some fun with it.